You know, I thought that I was actually good at not being on my phone all the time until I actually looked at my screen time and learned that that was not the case. <laughs> because of this, I decided to swap my screen time for reading. Before I start reading, I of course want to show you guys my screen time for last week. I think that my problem is that I always have YouTube running on my phone in the background. So if I'm editing or if I'm doing my makeup, so even though I'm not staring at my screen, it still makes my screen time high. At least that's what I keep telling myself to make myself feel better for having such a high screen time. But let's start off with Sunday. On Sunday, I spent five hours and 17 minutes on my phone. The most used app was YouTube. Instagram comes in seconds. So I literally have no excuse for Instagram being so high, but there we have it. Then Monday, I spent five hours and 27 minutes. Again, YouTube came in number one for the most used app. And then Kindle actually came in second. So I technically read for about an hour on my phone on Monday. That's not too bad because if you subtract an hour of that reading time, I was only on my phone for like four hours. So I'm pretty proud of that. And then Tuesday, I spent three hours and 53 minutes, but an hour of that was actually spent on the Kindle app. So I in fact was reading. Am I allowed to subtract reading time from my screen time since I was reading that day? Huh. Wednesday was pretty bad. I have no excuse for Wednesday. I don't know why my screen time is so high, but I spent six hours and four minutes on my phone. Why did I spend an hour on Instagram? Thursday, five hours and 34 minutes. Again, YouTube, number one. Friday, three hours and three minutes. YouTube, again, number one. I'm always on YouTube. What does that say about me? And then Saturday was so freaking good. I only spent one hour and 39 minutes on my phone. That is my screen time, you guys. Not that bad compared to other people's screen time, but I still think it's bad for me. I should not be spending that much time on my phone, which is why I'll be swapping my screen time for reading. I think this is a fun way to actually realize how much time we actually have in a day. It's so easy for us to make excuses and to say that we don't have enough time to read a book, to work on a goal. But in fact, if you look at your screen time, I bet you it's pretty high and you do in fact have time to do the things that you need to do. You just don't think you do because you don't realize how much time you're actually spending on your phone. At least that's the realization that I came to when I looked at my screen time. <laughs> To kick off this challenge, I am going to be reading The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So I actually started this book during my last 24 hour reading vlog and I got to page 160. I'm almost halfway done with the book. I'm not a huge fan of any of the characters if I'm being honest, but I'm enjoying the plot and the storytelling of the book. So I figured that I would start off with this book since I do have to finish it anyways. I am going to set my timer or my stopwatch I should say so I can keep track of how long I'm actually reading for I don't know if I'm going to be able to read for five hours straight I think I'm going to read a little bit throughout the day since I still do have to get work done and I just can't spend five hours straight reading that's just not going to happen today but I'll definitely update you guys as I go I've been reading for 52 minutes, almost an hour, but I'm taking a small break because I want to go shower and take my makeup off and get into a cozy outfit, like a sweatshirt and leggings outfit. <laughs> That's like my go-to outfit whenever I read. I feel like I can read a lot more. Why is this zooming in? I feel like I can read a lot more if I feel comfortable and right now I'm not feeling comfortable. It also looks like it's about to pour and I love reading while it's raining. So I'm loving the vibes I'm getting. <laughs> So far I read for 3 hours and 35 minutes. I have about 2 hours left of reading and it's currently 8pm. I just finished reading The Cruel Prince. I didn't love it but I didn't hate it. 
I went into the book knowing that it was going to be slow because it is the first book in a fantasy series and normally the first book in a fantasy series tends to be really slow because of all the world building and the character introductions and all of that. That didn't bug me that much. I mean, I was a little bit bored in some parts of the book, but it definitely did pick up towards the end and I didn't see the twist coming, which was nice. I like being surprised by books, especially fantasy books, but I don't like any of the characters. I can't stand Jude. Like she's obsessed with power and like I get it, but at the same time I'm like girl get over yourself already. And then Prince Cardin, I understand where he's coming from. He redeemed himself a little bit towards the end of the book, but I just can't get past how he treats people. Why are people obsessed with him? Maybe I'll become obsessed with him in the second book, but for this book, I'm just not a fan at all. Yeah, I think I give this book a 3 out of 5 stars, but hopefully the second book is better. Like I said, it is 8 p.m. and I still have two hours left to read. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of sick of reading already. I wish I didn't have to read but i'm doing this challenge so i need to pick a new book since i just read a fantasy book i think i'm going to go back into the romance genre and read people we meet on vacation by emily henry let's see how far i can get into this book with two hours left to read It is the next morning, Tuesday. I need to grab my phone. I hate spam text messages. Like, what is the point of that? Anyways, so I have to read for three hours and 53 minutes, which is a lot shorter than yesterday. And I'm so glad. Well, only an hour shorter. I love reading, but this video is really hard to do when you have other responsibilities that you need to take care of during the day. But I'm going to continue reading People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I got to page 94 yesterday. So far, I've been enjoying this book. It hasn't wowed me yet. Like, Beach Read wowed me from the very beginning. This one I feel is slower. And to be honest, I was so tired reading this last night. As soon as I hit my reading time yesterday, I shut off the camera, I shut off my phone, and went straight to sleep. I was so tired. I honestly don't remember what I was reading. <laughs> the book does go from the past to the present, which I don't know if I'm enjoying that if I'm being honest Normally, I don't mind but for this book. I don't know. It's just not really working for me Regardless, I'm going to shut up now because I literally have nothing to say I'm going to continue reading I'm going to start my little handy stopwatch and start reading I'm in the same spot <laughs> I've been reading for over an hour and you guys, I'm struggling with this book. I don't know why I'm struggling, but I am. I feel like with book lovers and Beach Read, I didn't struggle this much. And maybe that's the problem that I keep comparing it to those books when I should just stop comparing it. Maybe it's because this is Friends to Lovers and I'm not a huge fan of Friends to Lovers. Still don't know what happened between Poppy and Alex. I don't know what made them stop talking to each other for two years. But as I keep reading, I keep thinking that the reason that they stop talking to one another is going to be so stupid and I feel like that's going to ruin the entire book for me. All I know is that I need a break so I'm going to take a tiny break, go outside, get some fresh air, maybe make some coffee and then get back to reading. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Do you hear that? <laughs> oh shit! Not me being scared of lightning. That shit was so close. I wonder if I caught that on camera, but it is pouring outside. I was outside for like five seconds before I heard the thunder and I was like, you know what? I'm going back inside because I think it's going to start pouring. Lord and behold, it started pouring. <laughs> this is perfect reading rather though.
before it started raining i was able to go to our package room and pick up a very exciting package that i'm about to show you this isn't sponsor or anything like that caseify was just super nice and reached out to me to send me some of their cases and i thought it would be fun to unbox them with you guys how cute is that little bowl i feel like i'm about to unwrap presents on my birthday or on christmas let's start with this little one right here oh this one is so cute this case is made from 65 percent recycled material how cute is this one you guys look at this one if you know me you know how obsessed i am with lore or anything so i'm loving this case all three of these phone cases are actually made of recycled materials so i think that is so cool i know that i'm going to have such a hard time choosing which case to put on my iphone i think i'm going to put on the book one because you know what i feel like it fits the vibe for today it just looks so cozy i do have a code for you guys if you want to check out caseify again this isn't sponsored they were just kind enough to send me these three cases and they also created a code for you guys i think it's 15 carmen gilfagotta i'll have it linked down below as well as on the screen feel free to save some money while you shop for a new phone case and yeah i'm really excited literally putting this one on right now stop it like how cute it's giving fall vibes and I'm here for it, especially when it's literally storming outside. Just finished People We Meet on Vacation and I actually read for longer than I was supposed to because I really wanted to finish the book. I read for four hours and 11 minutes today. Literally every time I sit down to film, my cat just comes running out for attention. It's like she hears my voice and she's like, what is mommy doing? What is mommy doing? I feel conflicted with people we meet on vacation if I'm being honest. The reason being is I really enjoyed, you can't even see the cover because of the sun. I really enjoyed Poppy and Alex. I loved their characters and I loved how different they were from one another. They're literally opposites. It just worked. I want a friend like Poppy. Like she was so bubbly. She was so full of life. So fun. Absolutely love her. And I just wanted to give Alex a hug the whole time. I loved his personality my only complaint is that i well i have a couple a couple complaints i didn't really like how much time we spent in the past which i think I think it's just a personal thing for me. Like, I just don't think I'm a fan of friends to lovers and the more I read books that have the friends to lovers trope, the more I realize that I'm just not a fan and that I should stop reading books with that trope because I always just get annoyed with the characters. I loved Poppy and Alex but after a while I was just getting annoyed with them. It's been 12 years of friendship and you're telling me neither of you have had the balls to share your feelings when it's obvious that both of you care for each other and then when i found out why they stopped talking to one another i was like really that's the reason you guys stopped talking to each other for two years so that kind of was just a letdown and i knew that once i figured out why they stopped talking to one another that it was going to ruin the book for me because books that follow the same concept always end the same way like couples who start off as friends and then something happens in their relationship that they stop talking to one another for a period of time every time i find out why they stop talking to each other i'm like really that's it that's why you stop being friends that's why you stop communicating and i just find it so stupid so it's hard for me to get behind the friends to lovers trope because i'm always like just be honest with each other and it's so obvious that they both love one another and that they have feelings for each other but they still question everything and i'm just like I think I give it like a 4 out of 5 stars. I'm going to be nice because I really like Emily Henry. If I hadn't liked the characters, I probably would have given it a 3 out of 5 if I'm being honest. Those are my thoughts on that and I am done reading for today. I met my screen time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm making myself some coffee because today is going to be a long, long day. Why does that taste so strong? Oh 
don't know what's wrong with my coffee. Today I have to read the longest compared to any other day this week. I'm kind of nervous, <laughs> but I'm determined. I'll actually be reading The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the second book in the Folk of Air series. As you guys saw, I read The Cool Prince on Monday. Not a huge fan of the series thus far, but hopefully this book will change my mind. Hopefully this book will make me love the series because right now I'm just not feeling it. Let's see what this book is given. How do I say this, you guys? I'm halfway done with the book I've been reading for over two hours. I don't like it. I just don't like the main character Jude. I find her so annoying. This book is just not that much better than the first book, if I'm being honest. I'm struggling to read it. I kind of want to DNF it, but I also just want to be done with the series. So I'm conflicted right now. All right, you guys, it is much later. I look like a hot mess. I literally did not even bother to get ready today. So ignore that. I just finished The Wicked King. And let me tell you, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I think I give this book a 3 out of 5 stars and honestly I'm being very very generous. I will say that the end Where'd you guys go? I will say that the ending had a massive twist that I did not see coming, which makes me kind of excited to start the third book, but not really. The ending was definitely fun. It was different. Majority of the book was just so boring to me. And again, I'm not a fan of Jude. Like, if you like Jude, please tell me why. Why? And I don't know if it's because she's young. I think she's only 17 about to turn 18 i don't know her age she's somewhere along that range 18 or 19 but i just find her so immature so impulsive so annoying like as i was reading the book i was like can you shut up like shut up please so yeah those are my thoughts on the wicked prince the ending definitely took me surprise but everything else was just meh not a fan of it and yeah i don't know what else to say i'm just not not a fan of this series at all I am starting today quite late in the day. It is 5.53 in the afternoon and I'm just not getting time to continue reading The Queen of Nothing. I have to read for 5 hours and 34 minutes today. I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to read that long because like I said, it's literally almost 6 o'clock in the evening. I would have to read without stopping until like 11.30 or midnight in order to hit my screen time. So today might be a failure. I've been filming and editing all day so this is the only time i've had to pick up my book you guys already know my thoughts on this series i'm not loving it i'm not a huge fan but i am committed to finishing the series this book is kind of short though it's only 305 pages so i think i'll be able to finish the book tonight we'll see I completely failed at reading this book yesterday. I only read for an hour. <laughs> I had like no time to read yesterday and when I finally sat down to read, I couldn't focus on this book. This book really wasn't captivating my attention. I was just getting annoyed with the main character, Jude. I only got to page 99. I'm on chapter 11. So I'm going to attempt to finish it today. No, I am going to finish it today because I just want to be done with the series. <laughs> finished reading it took me three hours and four minutes to finish queen of nothing i even read the sneak preview to another holly black book i'll start off by saying that this book is the best book in the series hands down i know that there's a couple more books in the series i think there's one two three four five six six books in the folk of air series i think i'm going to stop at this one i have no interest in reading the other books this was definitely the best one i think i give this one maybe like a three and a half maybe a four star i haven't really decided i enjoyed it way more than i enjoyed the first two it was a lot more fast paced the ending was very predictable but it had me smiling regardless it was such a heartwarming ending that i couldn't help but smile all the characters redeemed themselves for sure in this book but i still don't like them <laughs> with that being said i don't know if i would recommend this series i would probably recommend a court of thorns and roses before i recommend this this series 
I just wasn't a fan. It wasn't for me. Kind of upset that I actually own it now, but whatever. I'm so sorry you love this series. I know that so many of you guys wanted me to read it. I'm just not a fan, and I have to be honest with you guys. I can't lie and say that I loved it when I did it. Those are my thoughts on the Queen of Nothing in the entire series. I have such a huge headache. I'm so glad I'm done reading for today. Tomorrow is the last day of the challenge. I think I only have to read for an hour, which is glorious. But yeah, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> literally just woke up and i'm about to start reading today i decided to start the wedding crasher by mia sosa it's supposed to be a little cute rom-com which i'm super excited it's actually the sequel to the worst best man and i absolutely adore that book so i actually can't wait to start this and i hope it's just as good as the worst best man and the cover is so adorable how cute is that This book, you guys, is so good. I'm only on page 122, but I'm loving this book so much. I love the main character, Solange and Dean. And one thing that I really like about this book is that it's dual POV. So you get both the female and male character's point of view. And you guys already know how much I love that in books. So I'm definitely going to continue reading it. I kind of want to sit here and read the whole book in one sitting. That's how entertained I am while reading it. I read for one hour and 40 minutes, so I hit my screen time I'm officially done with this challenge aside from Thursday because we don't talk about her at all <laughs> I think that this was a very successful challenge I decreased my screen time immensely by doing this challenge because I had no time to be on my phone this week I was too busy reading even though I think this challenge was successful I don't think it's realistic to read five hours every single day unless you want to then knock yourself out but I don't see myself reading five hours every single day from now on but this challenge definitely put things into perspective for me it really opened up my eyes on how much i'm on my phone and how i need to stop that i really need to stop grabbing my phone throughout the day i feel like i'm going to go on my phone less now that i know exactly how many hours i'm spending on my phone every single day and it's unacceptable i feel like i could be using that time to do other things with all that being said that is pretty much it for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed this a little challenge i love doing these reading challenges it definitely makes me go out of my comfort zone and makes me make time to actually read so i had so much fun this week reading even though i felt like it was a little inconvenient i still had a lot of fun if there are any other reading challenges that you guys want me to try definitely let me know in the comments below and maybe i'll film your reading challenge suggestion but that is pretty much it for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed watching if you did don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i would love to have you a part of my channel and i'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!